loaded their 44 pounds of lunar material aboard the lunar module, and after four hours and 50 minutes on the surface, climbed back into Antares. As Shepard and Mitchell rested, Stuart Rusa continued his work from lunar orbit. His photographs would have meaning not only to the scientific community, but would have direct bearing on the planning for coming missions. Twelve hours, forty minutes later, Shepard and Mitchell began their second exploration period. After loading the lunar rickshaw, Mitchell began the journey to Cone Crater. Shepard adjusted the television camera, then hurried to join his partner. first stop on the trip to Cone. Here they would collect and document samples, measure the local magnetic field, and take core tube samples from beneath the surface layer. This is a good place for A. They have an appearance here quite often, like raindrops, uh, a very few raindrops have splattered the surface. The quality of the scientific description by the astronauts could be termed by Earth-based scientists only as excellent. But now Shepard and Mitchell pushed on. After a brief stop at a second survey site, they began their assault on Cone Crater, a climb not only toward the summit of a lunar mountain, but back through time. A large crater acts in many respects like a drill, throwing out material from deep beneath the surface. This material should be very different from any we've collected before, perhaps dating back to the origins of the moon and even the solar system. And we're starting uphill now. We're fairly gentle at this point, but it's definitely uphill. Why don't we pull up beside this big crater, okay, take a break, get the map, see if we can find out exactly where we are. The maps they were using had been made from photography from lunar orbit. The hummocks, craters, ridges, and boulders took on a new appearance when seen from the surface. Oh, it looks like it's got kind of a flat over there the way it's leaning. Uh, start on up toward the rim? Yeah, just one second, though. Pretty full of oil. We're having all the fun. Now they were working against time, against the oxygen and water left in their backpacks, against the alien terrain. Top a ridge, thinking it's the rim of the crater, and there's another ridge ahead of you. Oh, let's give it a whirl. See where we get uh, stuff without looking. 
Standing in a boulder field surrounded by rocks 10 to 12 feet long, the astronauts made their most difficult decision. With the concurrence of mission control, they stopped their climb, less than 150 feet from the edge, to begin the more important job of collecting samples. The crew had no way of realizing they were so close. It was a week after the mission before we determined this by photographic analysis. While they could overcome the terrain, they could not beat the steady drain of oxygen from their backpacks. In the terms of scientific meaning, the decision not to go on to the rim meant little. In human terms, a great disappointment. is of different composition to the Apollo 11 and 12 rocks. In fact, the chemistry of all the rocks that have been looked at so far is different to those rocks. Potassium and uranium are ten times higher, which are the sort of values we might expect if the Fraumara rocks represent ancient lunar crust, which of course is what we're all hoping. Again it was time. Time to head back to the lunar module. After a quick side trip to check on the science station, they loaded the lunar module with samples and data and stepped off the lunar surface. The second expedition had lasted four hours and 35 minutes, a total exploration of a record nine and one half hours. Thirty-three and a half hours after they landed, Alan Shepard and Edgar Mitchell lifted off in the silent vacuum of the moon. An hour later, Stuart Russo watched their progress from Kitty Hawk. What are you doing way down there, old fearless one? You've lost a little weight since the last time I saw you. Well, you're still in charge. The station's keeping at about 100 feet, closing in a little more for the victims of the service module and command module. The inspection complete, Antares and Kitty Hawk moved together for docking. The 
Apollo 14, this is Houston, your go for the docking. Roger, we got you. Big sigh of relief being breathed around here. They transferred the gear from Antares to Kitty Hawk, buttoned up the tunnel, then jettisoned the lunar module. It would crash into the moon at a predetermined spot. Its impact picked up by their seismometer and the seismometer left by Apollo 12 over a year earlier. 149 hours after they left Earth, they performed the burn that broke them out of lunar orbit. During the coast to Earth, there would be time to catch up on sleep, relax, and do all the little things left undone. And there was one more item, a series of scientific demonstrations in zero gravity, demonstrations impossible to reproduce on Earth. These trials looked at basic physical properties of matter in zero gravity, studies that could lead eventually to new materials manufactured in space for use on Earth. On February 9, 1971, nine days after they left Earth, the crew of Apollo 14 hit the atmosphere of their planet at a speed of over 24,000 miles per hour. They hurtled toward Earth, a meteor heading home. On board, 95 pounds of the moon. Extremely important. It relates to the question of why, we, why we're fooling around from the moon. It's really that the, the imprint of history, of solar system history, on the Earth-Moon system is centered on the moon for the first billion years. What do we hope to gain is we've got a window right now between T equals zero, the beginning of the solar system, and when the Earth so totally messed up itself that we can't look at it anymore. We'd like to look in there, and that window's on the moon. Apollo 14 has already had a very big scientific impact, and we still have three missions left. They'll be heading into even more rugged and more interesting areas of the moon. Beginning with Apollo 15, the lunar rover will let us range further afield and collect more and more varied scientific samples and information. The study of the moon and how, for instance, elements and minerals are distributed in its crust will enable us to learn more about the process of crust formation on Earth, leading to a better understanding of the way that certain elements concentrate in the crust. Will we have had enough missions to the moon by the end of the Apollo program? Probably not. You can never have enough knowledge, but at least it's an excellent beginning. <laughs> 